So welcome back everybody. My name's Andrew and you're watching the Kelly's Country Life. If this is your first time visiting the channel, thanks so much for stopping by. We post weekly content. So I just got the call that my little lab puppy that I put a deposit down on several weeks ago will be ready for pickup in just a couple of days. And just in time, FedEx just dropped off my new dog kennel. So today's video, we're going to put together a kennel that I picked up off of Amazon. I got to price them locally at my tractor supply. They were like $550 for a similar size. I got this one shipped to the house for $319. And I'll put a link down in the description to this right here. But that blew my mind that I was able to save $230 on what's hopefully a comparable kennel. I need a little an area out here that I can bring my dog whenever I have to go run errands or whenever I'm working on the property and can't keep an eye on him. I want somewhere for him to be able to run around around play better use the bathroom if need be and by the way coming up in one of our next videos we're going to custom build a dog house too and i've got a very special design in mind that's going to make an easy to clean out dog house time to slow this thing down as far as putting all this together it couldn't be any more simple there's a bunch of pre-drilled holes and this has that pipe that has these little spring-loaded pins right here so you clamp them together slide the pipe in twist it till it lines up with all these pre-drilled holes it snaps back you're ready to go not the most sturdy connection on the planet but by far one of the quickest connections there's going to be so now it's time to put on our gate hinges they come in a pack just like this now here's the thing, anytime you install a gate hinge, you put one on like this, the other end is going to attach to our door here in just a second, and you put the other one like that, preferably on the bottom so you can slide the gate over and it'll hold it for you, but you leave one loose and put it down from the top, because if you put them both the same direction, well you can just pick the gate up and off, your dog or somebody can do that, open the door right up, so you always want to make sure one's flipped over so the gate can't go up and it cannot go down. Now, while it's on my mind, if you wind up getting one of these, all right, we'll leave that a little loose. All I have seen thus far that it takes is a 9 16 and an 11 16 either socket or wrench. This just makes it way quicker using the sockets. All right, so here's how the gate went together. You have these two clamps that go together with a single bolt. So I know I need a pipe right here beside this gate because I've got to put a latch on here. I'm going to run the pipe through, put that carriage bolt in. Another one side. We're going to do the same thing on the bottom. Then we can lock all this in place. So while all this is a little time consuming, there is absolutely nothing complicated about any of this okay so this latch looks very straightforward looks like i just mount it to this post right here it's got a design you have to lift up and then it'll flip over or you can drop down then it's going to lock against this right here i can see where somebody might have a dog smart enough to get that out now then i'm gonna have a puppy in here for a while i'm gonna mount this a little bit higher so it'll actually take a long time for the puppy can reach this. And if I see any issues, I can come up with a different latching solution. Or you can wire it, put a strap on there, you can do something. Okay, so here is the part. This is by far the heaviest and probably going to be the most aggravating part. Is putting up this steel wire right here so first things first let's find the end get it pulled all the way out because we have to feed this rod that we're actually going to hook, hook to and tension the wire so we got to pull this last piece all the way out and this just slides all the way down through this very easy 
it would not be a bad idea to have two people for this part. I'm probably about to regret trying to do this myself. <laughs> and sorry for the breathing heavy in the camera. I'm fat and this is heavy. Good enough. Now it can hold up on its own. As you can see, we still have a lot of tensioning to do to get it all the way around. Okay, so that bar that you see me put through, now you can see why. This kit comes with all these clamps that you actually hook around that bar, goes around the post, and we'll put four per side. The kit also comes with a bunch of these wire hooks. So what I'm gonna do is start loosely. They want you to kind of hook and tie them up a certain way. I'm just gonna do like I do fencing, put this right around, use a pair of lineman's pliers and twist these tight. Just like that right there. But we're gonna leave this relatively loose. I'm just gonna go around and make sure I leave plenty of play because we still have to tension and pull this and I want this to better slide down the pipe. Once we get the tension where we want it, then I'll come back with these pliers and actually twist that wire really, really tight. We'll do this top and bottom so the animals can't get out. So what I'm doing now is just going around getting any odd spots out of the wire, pulling it on around a little further. I'm gonna have to work it around a couple times to get enough to come all the way back around. Another thing that you can do is you can actually take your pliers or a hammer, stick in this wire like this and actually pull it tighter around a post. So now's the time to go around the top and the bottom of the wire and when you see pieces like this that aren't hooked correctly or bent in shape correctly or ones like this that are apart, now's the time to put it together because once you tension all this, you're gonna be in trouble. It's gonna be extremely difficult to do that top and bottom. It's gonna take me a few minutes to go around and find all the loose pieces but that is my next focus point. Then I'm just gonna loosely go around, like I said, twist this wire, work the tension out, stick something in right here, like a hammer or those pliers, pull and keep going around. You can wire tie here and wire tie up here. We'll do everything we need to do. thing worth mentioning whenever you're wire tie in the bottom wrapping your little wire ties around and tying this off don't forget just flip this whole thing over it's so much easier than kneeling down on the ground and when trying to put the tarp on like this flip it over again especially when you're working by yourself okay now that I have successfully put together this kennel I have some tips and tricks and thoughts to share on it. By the way, I'm gonna assume this probably took me an hour and a half. I forgot to start a timer. Nothing overly complicated. There's just some time consuming parts. Actually, the most time consuming part by far was all the different wire ties that I did all the way along the bottom, the edges to hold up this chain link fencing. So let's take a look. Some things I like, things I don't like. So for starters, you can see the tarp is relatively floppy, which is not gonna be a good thing as far as the wind and heavy rains go. I can foresee it if we get really, really heavy rains wanting to puddle up um, in the center and maybe cause an issue before it can run off the side. And the reason it's so floppy is because actually the tarp is a little too big. Because this end, I don't have anything around the corner that I can tie to, you know, no chain link fence wrapping around. I had to carry the tarp back several inches this way. Well, that leaves it way too long, wrapping around the end, and everything just gets floppy. The tarp really needs to be a bit shorter. You can see how I can wrap around the end here because I have fencing here that I cannot have because the gate's on the other end. Now, one thing I can tell you I like that they did do with the roof. I looked at several models. You will be shocked at how many models do not come with these two bars 
right here. They just come with one center one. Well, what do you think happens when you get a torrential downpour and heavy winds? I actually seen reviews and people posting pictures of other brands to where this center bar had bowed in, completely collapsed because this had got so heavy with rain. Now with that said, I would have loved to have paid a few more dollars and got four more of these pipes. Maybe had one here, one over there, one there. That would have given the, uh, the roof a lot more structure. But that's just a minor nitpick. I am glad that they did include these two to support that center. As far as the gate goes, it's okay. I kind of wish the gaps weren't as big as they were. This is as tight as I can get this chain link here. I do wish that was a little bit tighter. These clips are absolutely necessary, the ones that kind of pop on, but I didn't trust them completely because I can actually pinch just tight enough and get these to pop off. So all I did was just put a little more wire up here. So if one of these ever get pinched off by the dog or something on the outside, I now actually have physical wire up here to keep this from being torn out. Um, the latch, I am curious about if a dog can eventually knock that up and out. I would like to see something that locks a little more, but right now while I have a puppy and I'm in puppy stage, this is so high up and I can even move it a little bit further and should still be plenty good. I don't think it's gonna be an immediate concern. And I think I could wind up putting a bungee cord or something there if I ever find that as the dog gets bigger, it figures out how to open this. A few things weren't worth mentioning and I'm not even grappling about them. This is a uh, relatively light gauge wire, but with that said, it's actually wire. You'd be shocked. I did see some uh, companies offering dog kennels that had a vinyl mesh. Um, it wasn't wire. Like, yeah, that's not going to work at all. That's, that's absolute joke. Now this is a galvanized coating, but I can already see some little bits of rust on it. So this must not be a heavy coating. Again, I'm kind of expecting some of this stuff for what, well, you know, what I paid. So as far as all the hardware goes, these are the wire ties that I have put everywhere. By the way, one important point to mention, a dog is always gonna try to get out or something is gonna try to get in at the bottom. So every few inches, you know, I hooked one of these in, you wrap it around the pipe and then you twist it back. So let me find one right here and show you what I've done. So I'm wrapped all the way around the pipe there, hooked into the fencing here, and I just twisted back around the fence. You can hardly see it. But one thing I really wanna mention, you see that tip right there? Always bend those back to the outside. I try to bend them in to where nothing can catch on them. But when you're bending this wire, do not ever leave it back in the cage or you're gonna wind up with a dog that's gonna get paws torn all open. So wire's the way to go. I wouldn't, wouldn't use anything else but wire because you really wanna hold this. This is where they're gonna try to get out but just make sure those sharp ends are back out this direction. Now, the other thing that I really liked about this kennel, be careful when you're looking on Amazon and other places, you'll find some killer deals on kennels and then you'll realize that this bar up here is actually about right here when you really get to looking at the specs. I mean, any dog there is could jump out of that. This one is right at six feet. I knew I wanted something that tall. So as the dog gets bigger, it doesn't want to jump up and come out ends like this. So be careful when you're shopping around. So I really do like the height of this. This is going to work great for many years for me. Um, the size looks good. We're 10 foot long. I forget. I think it's a little over six foot wide. Uh, a lot of people may want a 10 by 10. Some people are going to want a six by six. By the way, this company makes a six by six. It was quite a bit less money. So if you have a really small dog and you don't need something 10 foot long. I like that it come with the roof, although another big concern right here. This is a really bad design, but it's really easily fixed. I'm shocked they let the tarp come down this, this far. I know why they're doing that. That helps with blowing rain. But now look, this tarp's already trying to get punctured through in a bunch of different places from chain link and bolts and everything else. So you know what a quick remedy is? I'm gonna go to the dollar store, get some pool noodles cut all the way down and make them to where they can clamshell open, put a pool noodle right over this or pipe insulation. You go to your hardware store and get uh, black pipe insulation. Actually, that's a much better idea. Let me show you some. So this right here is black pipe insulation. It's already got this slit in it. It's designed to go around all different size pipes and that's foam material. So now if I put that foam material over the top rail and then pull my uh, tarp back tight, it should last for a very, very long time. Now I don't have this tarp sitting on all these sharp edges and pieces trying to tear on me. Um, that's something they really should have thought through a little better. But luckily for me, that's about a eight to $10 fix. So the good thing about this is, although it's quite heavy, it's two person portable. 
you can pick up on the other end it's plenty sturdy enough and this can be moved around now with that that's another problem it's not necessarily the design fault of the company there most kennels are going to be lightweight enough to move so if we get very heavy thunderstorms and rain well i mean especially like hurricanes here in florida this could blow over but i'm also worried a bigger dog could get underneath pick it up and get out i mean if they want to get out it's just about impossible to keep them in <clears throat> so a good remedy for that is um, you can order online some of those screw in earth augers that'll go down wire one to every corner now this can no longer be flipped over in the rain or a dog can't get underneath and lift it up so definitely need to do a little more work to this the other thing that i need to do is well a dog's going to try to dig underneath and get out so either i can lay some wire in on the inside and then layer the inside of this uh cage with you know pine shavings kind of like you do chicken pins or dirt and actually cover the wire itself up so if the dog goes to dig it'll find the wire but then that could damage their nails the other thing that you can do i actually have some no dig fencing i put around my chicken coop um, that's made to drive down into the ground that goes down about 10 inches and it's just a bunch of pipes that are tightly spaced you hammer them in i may do that all the way around so as the dog tries to dig and go underneath well guess what it's going to run into actual steel bars and it's going to have to dig so far down in the ground i should be able to find that by the time i get home and that shouldn't be able to happen but we'll keep an eye on things so final thoughts well for just over 300 bucks shipped to my house I think I got my money's worth. I think I got exactly what I paid for. So coming up in some of the next episodes, I'm gonna custom build a dog, a weatherproof dog house out here. And I'm gonna make a really special design for it to uh, be really easy for a human to work inside, to clean it out, uh, just to give human access to it. So you don't wanna miss that episode. And then coming up in future episodes, we'll uh, dog proof this a little more with some of the things I was telling you about. I'll show you a few little upgrades that I'll do. We'll show you our brand new puppy that we're about to get here and a few other little gadgets that's gonna go in here to keep an eye on our little guy. Thank y'all so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next episode.